25-year-old Sam Quinn left his job as a chef to fulfill his ambition of becoming a pilot. With few roads in the mountainous Papuan highlands, his daily supply flights from Tamika are helping bring about rapid change to the remote tribes as they connect with the outside world. Cargo today is uh, just biscuits, noodles, cigarettes, just to sort of supply some water, rice here, some flour and sugar, just for the local villagers, eh? Without Susie Air, they would face a 15-hour trek through thick jungle to reach the nearest town. There's no roads out there or anything like that, so... These tribes are really in the middle of nowhere, so they really need us. just rising over the mountains and you see the snow peak mountain up at Mount Jaya. It's a freedom, really. Sam came to Suzy Air with low hours and little experience. Now, after two years with the airline, the dream of returning to a safer job back home is closer than ever. I was thinking about uh, moving on, just thinking of different opportunities I have flying-wise. I do want to get go to a commercial, but like most pilots do want to move on and fly the heavies, fly the medium jets and the light jets. Today's first flight is into Alama, a mountain strip deep in the jungle, inhabited by a mixture of Amungme, Damal, and Nduga peoples. The dangers at these remote strips can be almost overwhelming for mountain pilots like Sam, who operate alone. I think Papua is like the final frontier of all general aviation in the world, and it is probably the most, the hardest terrain, the worst weather. You got the people, their hazard. I've heard of a couple of guys getting punched. Like some strips, there's about 50 people tr trying to get on a plane, pushing, pushing the pilots out the way. So you kind of have to be like the riot police sometimes and just chuck people out or like stop fights. It's another day in Papua, really. Today, the weather is clear but being able to see the runway is only half the battle. Once committed, Sam needs to be on the lookout for anyone crossing the strip. Stall, stall, stall. Good landing overall, but in one piece, sir. With the supplies unloaded, Sam leaves it to the local security guard to board the passengers for the return flight. Yeah, it's pretty cool living in a place like this, like you're in the middle of nowhere, literally like right in the sticks. There's nothing here. They must have a really like simple and nice life here and it just must be really relaxed until they have a tribal war with another village, you know, that is. Although Papuans are mostly peaceful, the rule of law is not fully enforced in some of the more remote regions. So the tribal peoples often settle disputes amongst themselves, sometimes with bows and arrows. Children are trained to use them for hunting from an early age. What, Babi? Babi? And Babi, tembak bambu, to. And the orang? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm just basically talking to him, like, what the different spears are for. This is for pigs, that's for birds, this is a bamboo for pigs, and, uh, I just asked him where the ones for humans, and he was like, oh, he doesn't have any here. This is just a kid's bows and arrow, but you can always tell, there's a piece of rock on that one, but you can always tell uh, the ones for humans because they're really big like that, and they're silver, and they're like made to kill, basically. What's, what's going on? I don't know. Oh, oh shit, he just smacks a girl in the face. Back at the plane, a man has opened the door and attacked a woman sat on board with a small child. Mate, this is why I paint. It's sticking around. You always get drummy. He, he's pulling out the wife. Another woman becomes involved. 
It turns out to be her mother. Sam, what's happening? I don't know what's going on. It's just a little bit of uh, aggro going on at the moment. So that's what we're going to be doing this afternoon, having a good old, like, family domestic in the jungle. <laughs> With the woman and child removed from the plane, the disturbance continues on the runway. With the situation escalating and arrows being drawn, Sam decides he must make a swift exit. Time to shoot, mate. raises a bow and arrow to anybody, you're like, oh, fucking hell, what's going on here? That's why I was just like, I'm not going to stick around to see what happens. If he did fire it at her, like, I'm sure a couple other guys would have fired a bow and arrow at him as well, so it would have, like, started a huge fight. People back home might go, oh, look at that cute little kid with his bow and arrow, but really it's a, it's a killing machine, really. They do have tribal wars out here still in Papua. It's not uncommon, like, we had one in Tibico where a couple guys just died last week guys with like eight bows and arrow, like arrows basically in his bloody chest. In Pangandaran, on the southern coast of the island of Java, the next generation of Suzy air pilots are being put through their paces. 26-year-old former professional poker player Nick Holmes has gambled his life in the UK on a new career in Indonesia. Traffic, traffic. Oh, oh shit. <laughs> I just saw it and I was like, whoa. At the moment, he is only allowed to play as a pilot in a simulator. Ditching, radio, transmit, mayday. But in five days, he is due to take control of a Suzy airplane for the first time, thousands of miles from his home on the Isle of Man. Indonesia was a huge culture shock. It's as far detached from the Isle of Man as you can possibly, possibly get. There are no similarities at all. First, though, he must pass his toughest test yet a verbal exam on everything he's learnt in the past two weeks. There is quite a lot of pressure because no one wants to fail this one, because we should really, really uh, know everything by now. If he gets a score of 90% or above, Nick will finally earn the chance to fly a plane. If they don't pass the verbal assessment here, then they do not get to go do the flight training. The thing is, it's very important to, to find the people that uh, read all the books but don't have the understanding. I will try to, uh, to find these people and try to take them out. It's annoying waiting. <laughs> I just want to do it. And I'm kind of worrying that I'm forgetting things every minute that goes by. I probably am. With his future career on the line, the test begins. Uh, uh, emergency during the takeoff roll before being committed, I will move the power to idle by maximum. Well, range. you can control the amount of fuel you're putting towards the engine. And also, if have... the primary prop governors fail, then I don't like it when you raise your eyes. <laughs> All right, I couldn't stop laughing. I get nervous. And... Now, Bus will reveal if he's reached the pass mark. 95. I'm happy with that. <laughs> That's good. Having passed the test with 95%, in a few days' time, Nick will take control of a Suzy airplane for the first time. I'm super excited. Can't wait to get in the plane because that's the main thing I came here to do, to fly the thing. And it's, no one looks forward to doing the ground school and the classroom work and the exams, but Everyone looks forward to flying the plane. Nick is one of 60 new recruits Suzy Air trains up every year. As one of the region's fastest growing airlines, it requires a constant stream of young pilots to help fuel its expansion. 
In Timica, Papua, Captain Sam Quinn, who's been flying with Suzy Air for two years, has been grounded after being struck down by an unknown illness. He has to make an urgent visit to the hospital for tests. Tropical diseases are rife in Indonesia. Some, like dengue fever and malaria, are difficult to defend against. Uh, last night, shivering, shaking, sweating, headache in the morning. I would have liked to be at my mom's house so she would like, look out for me, make chicken soup or something like that, <laughs> get me water. <laughs> Due to the extended time the pilots stay out in Indonesia, taking anti-malarial drugs is not recommended, so pilots have to take their chances. I'll get my results in a couple of hours. If you're living in a different country, like uh, you'd probably just think you'd have a cold, but when you live here in Tamika and you get start to get like aches and uh, shivers and sweats, you always think, oh no, I have malaria. Not long after getting back from hospital, Sam gets a call telling him to return for further tests. Doctor just called me and then uh, he was like, oh, I got some bad news for you. I was like, oh, shit, what is it? He was like, oh, yeah, you're malaria positive. Ask it after him saying to me, oh, I'm 95% sure you don't have malaria. I've done 30 swabs this month and only two became positive, so I guess I'm one of the lucky ones. These second tests will reveal which strain he has contracted. Certain strains could end his career as a pilot, or even worse, prove fatal. His thoughts of returning home to fly bigger jets are on hold. First, he needs to beat the malaria. Flying from Sumatra in the west to Papua in the east, the airline covers nearly 2 million square kilometers and 168 destinations, with new routes being added every year. Each new route provides a lifeline to the community it serves. So when a new strip is opened, it's a huge cause for celebration. Captain Guy Richardson is taking the police chief and the governor of the lowlands region to formally open the new airport in Kabare. Opening new strips such as places like Kabare is uh, yeah, fantastic, not just for, for the community, but we kind of uh, enjoy it as pilots as well. Now descending into Kabai and expecting a bit of a, a bit of a fanfare when we arrive. There's going to be lots of people around to, to uh, see this sky and open up the, the airfield to Suzy Air. So it should be exciting. Having landed for the first time, the local community come out in force, offering gifts of betel nuts, exotic flowers and cigarettes to the government officials. The next recipient to be showered with gifts is the plane. Something Guy isn't too pleased about. Maybe not if I stuff the aircraft. Take up. Yeah, take up, mate. Tell them they can't post stuff at the aircraft. Finally, it's the pilot's turn to receive thanks and blessings for the future. New routes offer quicker access to food, medicine and travel, so the locals shower the pilots with thanks something it's unlikely they'd experience back in the UK. Pilots are treated uh, really, really well out in Indonesia. 
I think it feels a bit like what, what the glory days were like back in the 70s and 80s in, in Europe and the US. A bit like Catch Me If You Can, the old DiCaprio marching along. You know, they see it as, as we're the people bringing them freedom, bringing them the aircraft, and, uh, you know, we get a real sense that they appreciate that. But to appreciate the benefits of flying for Susie Air, you first have to qualify from their training school. For the new recruits, flying in Indonesia for the very first time is a daunting task. And at Nusawiru Airport near Pangandaran, Nick Holmes is facing his first test flight. You scared? No, I'm okay. That's, that's steady enough. He's a surgeon. <laughs> Nick is the most inexperienced pilot on the course, with only 250 flying hours to his name. I really am nervous, and there's no good reason for it. It'll be fine. <laughs> I'm just going to keep telling myself that. It's all okay. He is being monitored by head trainer Bus Hellings and must prove he's up to the job if he's going to continue on the course. I take off briefing. Threats, possibly people crossing the runway to keep good eye for that. It's your first flight. Oh yes, and I'm the biggest threat too. When we take the plane up for the first time with the students, I am a little bit nervous. Um, you have no idea yet what they're going to do. Once they've done two or three good ones, then I'll be more relaxed as well, knowing, oh, they're not going to kill me today. Airspeed alive. Check. And 60. Check. It's okay to wiggle the ailerons a bit, uh, uh, get a feel for the flame. Okay. Oh. A bit too much? Yeah. Oh. No. <laughs> All of our students already have been flying airplanes back home in Europe, but now in Indonesia they're going to have to get used to a different environment again, different language, different weather. Runway incursions are way more likely here, so there's quite a few new things that will be thrown at them. 50 knots fast and 100 feet high. How did that happen? That'd be. Oh, shit. 40 feet low. Meg, what's going on? Nick's first flight isn't going well, but the real test is still to come. Your first uh, approach and landing. Give yourself some more space. This is a bit wide. With Nick about to land a caravan for the first time, Bas is understandably nervous. Where the runway is, keep descending. Airspeed to be around 95, 85 is final. Fast. Oh. a bit fast. Pitch oh, up, yeah. pitch up. Pitch up. Oh, no, 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 no. Please, uh, this thing. Not demonstrate that again. Wobbly. Have a knot to the right. Pitch up, 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 up. Left rudder, left rudder. I think I was more nervous than you. Worst of the day. Bus will give Nick one more chance to prove he's good enough to get the job. But as another pilot at Nusawiru Airport has proved, it could have gone a lot worse. A plane from a private flight school has crash landed. It was quite shocking to see. It didn't look good at all. It looked really bad. Really worried that uh, the pilot would be seriously injured. It's something that happens, and uh, it happened today. And it is a warning to us. The victim of today's crash was lucky. He was taken to hospital with only a badly broken leg. When you see something real like today, you do kind of want to put it out of your mind because otherwise you just worry yourself to death all the time. Next time. Sam hopes his malaria doesn't end his flying career. Yeah, there are some strains out there apparently in uh, like Papua New Guinea where it attacks your nervous system. And 
Captain Dave Burns flies some high-profile passengers. Oh, I need to pay him the utmost respect. Treat him really as a VIP, because at the end of the day, the guy sitting there is the guy who awards all the contracts to Susie in this area.